investors wear many hats. Um, the retail piece, your institutional investor, much like EPF and so on. And the retail investor really came on and uh, through the pandemic. And we had to bring the whole industry along a journey of allowing this group of individuals to trade off-prem, uh, different ways of trading, not ringing their miser. And what is interesting to see is at the end, uh, we, we now, we, we of course always track our stats, but some 80-odd percent of retail trades online, direct, uh, to their broker, of course, and then to us, where previously there would have been a phone call, a conversation. And so what we're looking to do as the market regulator is to facilitate ease of use, um, more efficiency, with an eye to reducing costs for all participants. And so uh, so we, you know, how to delight the customer is really what we're looking at doing and facilitating, and if you like, just raising the bar a little bit by our own investment. And as we act as a catalyst by making that investment in more technology, we bring along the participants in the market to match that investment, if you like. So we act as a catalyst. Now, uh, you also asked the question about unicorns and innovation, and that's a really big piece and a very important piece. And it's sort of fundamental what we're talking about. Uh, you would have heard about... Um, uh, Tunku Zafra mentioned the PLC transformation and you know, Imri and I will be working on the, these different pillars and one of those pillars actually is uh, IDR 4.0 and how do we enable PLCs in particular to act as a catalyst because while they represent a portion of the market and we do recognise MSMEs, uh, 99% of the, of the market if you like, um, PLCs lead and they have the ability to change habits. And that's what we're looking to do together. So it's all about catalyzing the change and it's more carrot than stick, if I may. Uh, today, with your mobile phones, you have more than a power of PC of what we used to have 30 years ago. So we kind of fast forward today from an era of what used to be a very device centric because actually not very long ago, if you think about it, anything you need to do, you've got to go to your PC and look at it, even your calendars. But today we have moved away from a what we call a device-centric world to a very data-driven world. And now we live in an era of a mobile-first, cloud-first world, or the intelligent cloud, the intelligent uh, edge world, where information can be accessed anytime and any anywhere. And, and with that change in how things are changing, Microsoft's own mission has also changed. And today, we want to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Not to do more, but to achieve more. Uh, because with technology today, we can allow everything to be done in a more efficient manner. So what we are doing with a lot of customers here in Malaysia only is to help them in their digital transformation journey by leveraging Microsoft's cloud and solutions for them to be the best in their industry. So like what Dr. Omar mentioned, how does he use technology today to be the best exchange in the world? How we can work uh, with Telecom Malaysia for them to be the best telco of the world by leveraging the technology that Microsoft provides. So that's our ambition. And obviously with that, not only the focus is on large, big corporates, we are obviously very keen with our investment that we're doing in Malaysia to generate new startup communities in the mm -hmm. Malaysian ecosystem working as you rightly mentioned earlier, with the 2,000 of our partners and driving more innovation with our partners so that they create the new technologies and new solutions that will attract more investors to come in and hopefully we'll have the next unicorn or the next Decacorn in Malaysia to this initiative. For the many of us, right, the, the shift from working from the office to home as well, that uh, presented uh, quite, um, quite an undertaking from TM. Uh, just to give a sense to uh, to the audience, right? The usage of of broadband at home went up, or shot up by by sixty percent, <laughs> and uh, we were again, you know, continuously upgrading uh, the network. And then at yeah, TM in twenty twenty, we had invested somewhere close to about two hundred and fifty million ringgit just to ensure that uh, that search of of uh, traffic. Yeah? Uh, could could be handled, but also you know one one thing as well. The uh, just can't help but just to throw in here, 
I'm sure your unified bill <laughs> did not go up by 60 percent. So, <laughs> so I think that is part of the value of the contribution, I think, of TM during that period. And uh, as we could appreciate, you know, the, the SMEs as well were struggling. You know, TM, we, we serve a large large group, large base of SMEs. You know, today we have about 377,000 of them. Yeah. Uh, how, to your point just now, Raman, you know, how they were, they were certainly not equipped right, to respond, mm. yeah, to, to go more, more digital. And uh, it, and clearly we, we knew that the government had the, um, the digitization fund, right, uh, uh, to be distributed this year, but it requires a lot of handholding power micro uh, as well as uh, small businesses in terms of the awareness, right, in terms of, uh, for them uh, of the various solutions that's available uh, for them, yeah? uh, a bit more of a hand-holding. And this mm. will be a continuous journey for our country, I believe, yeah? uh, for us to really uh, bring our micro SMEs and uh, back on its feet again and uh, continue to play the role that they do in terms of their contribution to G- our GDP as well as to the employment. So, so that's a bit of a flavor on how it was for TM across, you know, the frontliners, across serving uh, uh, Malaysians uh, at home as well as uh, the SMEs. What I think was really good was that our digital team launched us into Microsoft 365 just before the lockdown. So when we were adapting to working from home, for most of us, um, you know, the, the fact that we had Microsoft 365 to ease us into this uh, was, was a fantastic arrangement for, for, for most of us. I think, you know, for Petronas, um, the fact that, of course, you know, when the MCO was um, was uh, was done, uh, came upon us, it was also to make sure that, you know, first we make sure that our the safety and um, um, the care for our our staff, especially our frontliners, how to make sure that they are kept safe uh, while making sure that because oil and gas was an essential service, but we were also looking at how to ease um, adapt adapting to this new norm for for everyone in the workforce, be it uh, smaller shifts. Uh, you know, so that to make sure that we uh, maintain distance while adhering to SOP. So it was a it was a huge effort across the group. Um, um, the management set up many uh, uh, initiatives. One being looking at the pandemic response team. So it was a very active group until now. We also have a corporate command center that looks at um, how we manage operations, how we manage international operations, evacuation. So it was a huge uh, effort, which is still going on right now. But um, I can see that, you know, with digitization and automation and um, good attitude from people, I think it it worked uh, so far all this while. But yes, the Arnie said today is uh, back to school or back to work for, for, for half of the population. So, so far, it's looking good. On the other part, you know, Arnie, I think you were talking to the other panelists about adapting to the to the norm um, yeah, yeah. at COVID, yeah. But for us, like for Petronas as a as an oil and gas and energy player, you, you know, you mentioned accelerated energy transition. We used to talk about energy transition, but it's come up to become accelerated energy transition, and this is the way to go now. You know, we have um, for the industry, um, it's also about accelerated energy transition. Uh, changing customer needs, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Umar talked about delighting customers, the customers needs all these changes, we have to be there. And also looking at increased stakeholder scrutiny from different parts of uh, the, the, the lenses that we touch upon. So, you know, when we look at how uh, these behaviours change and continue to evolve, our workforce as well, how our workforce um, uh, works uh, works, and also the expectation will also continue. So one, one thing that we have to adapt to is that this new norm is not just for employees or customers, but it's for all stakeholders, our lenders, our shareholders. So what we did was, you know, to look at how do we actually manage this new norm, right, under an accelerated energy transition. So we keep asking ourselves these tough questions, right? And we have our statement of purpose for Petronas to be a progressive energy and solutions partner and reaching lives for a sustainable future. So how do we pave our way forward, strengthen our resilience in business so that there's long-term sustainability while still managing this strong license to operate? We look at innovation. What can we do so that we can have um, we can continue to have superior performing businesses and also diversification? How do we look at future workforce? 